peace of God You can't hurry He'll be there Don't you worry When I was a kid, my family lived in this little town in the Mississippi Delta called Leland, Mississippi. If you have any vision in your mind of a cotton plantation in the deep south, the place you are imagining is the Mississippi Delta. In the 1960s, Leland was still as archly segregated as it ever was. In those very early years, I just noticed that it was all white over here and all black over there, and black folks had more trouble than white folks, and it perplexed me. I started asking a lot of questions, which seemed uncomfortable to everybody I asked them to, including my parents. Uh, and so I couldn't make any sense out of it. And then, as my first day of first grade was coming up, this incredible thing that happened, and black kids and white kids were gonna go to school together for the first time. But the, uh, but yeah, that you, my first when I'm watching something like that, being the neurotic artist, my first reaction is that wow, that is way too much footage of those scenes of, <laughs> of cotton fields at the beginning. You know, three three minutes of cotton scenics is too much to start the film with. Uh, so that's what I'm doing when I watch that. But I hope it does give you some sense of what the film is about, uh, and that that I was in this group of kids who, having nothing unlike uh, Miss Thomas. Uh, having no consciousness of what was happening, no, no, no part in making it happen, but I was in this class of children who uh, began the first day, first grade in Mississippi in the fall of 1970 uh, in fully integrated classes and then went all 12 grades together. And uh, what a lot of black put together to school, black and white. And what a lot of people don't realize when we talk about the uh, public school desegregation in America is we all really fixate on and we're taught uh, all about the Brown decision in 1954 um, and then we hear something about these other uh, uh, milestones uh, like at Central High in Little Rock or in other places where they'll always be like the Little Rock 9 you know or the Charlottesville 12 you know and what those things are referring to is that at some date a few years or maybe many years after the Brown decision when, a, when the first African-American kids went over to the white schools. That's actually what those events in almost every case were. And it would be that a tiny number, a very small number of black children were finally being permitted to, uh, under what generally were referred to as freedom of choice plans, were finally permitted to go over and attend the white school. But, the, but by the time you got to the end of the 1960s, uh, it was still the case that uh, that fewer than 1% of, of African-American children in the Deep South, and for that matter, most of the U.S., uh, were the fewer than 1% were attending schools that were not 100% or essentially 100% African-American. Does that make sense, the way that's sort of convoluted math, you know? But essentially, the segregated system uh, had not changed very much in the 15 years after the Brown decision, uh, and, and those those instances of limited integration, limited desegregation, uh, were very important, very significant. You know, were enormous steps forward. But ultimately, the the strategy of the other side, the strategy of the people who were trying to preserve segregation, was to end up in an environment where the courts would go along with the idea that, well, as long as everybody gets to just decide where they want to go, 
then it's fine to still have separate schools. There can be a, a, central, a de facto white system and a de facto black system, and then you just say, well, everybody gets to decide where they want to go, and in effect, segregation will be preserved because no white people were ever going to go over to what had been the African American school, uh, and particularly if you then use social pressures to try to prevent black people from making that choice of sending their children to the other school or keep them isolated or in very small numbers, then in one way or another you end up with a de facto kind of segregated system. Um, and so that was the state of play in most places all through most of the 1960s. And then rather abruptly in 1969, there was another Supreme Court ruling that, uh, that most of us aren't very familiar with unless you've been a student of this, and that was the, the Holmes decision. Uh, and in 1969, the Supreme Court had a whole bunch of cases, dozens of cases related to school districts in Mississippi, uh, were all aggregated into one case that reached the Supreme Court in the fall of 1969. And the court essentially said, enough, you know, enough. You know, we're, we're not putting up with any, of the, any more of these delays. And then to the shock of lots of people, uh, ordered that the segregated systems, that every place that had separate systems uh, should immediately integrate those systems and close their schools in the middle of the school year if necessary uh, at Christmas or at the break between the semesters in the 69-70 year and then reopen afterwards, maybe just a few weeks later, reopen as fully integrated systems. And that happened in thousands of places. And so the, the, the real moment when millions of children for the first time are finally in the same school systems arrives in about 1970, generally in the, in the fall of 1970. And that's when I happened to start the first grade. And in Mississippi back then, you didn't have kindergarten. So that was the first day of school. And so the film is really about uh, the experiences that I and my classmates who, who graduated from high school in 1982, uh, the experiences of that group of children uh, who then go, are the first to go through all of, all 12 grades of public education together, black and white. Uh, and it's also, though, uh, it's a look at how this little town in Mississippi was, in some respects, surprisingly open to the possibility of integration. There were, and what I mean by that is that uh, you did not instantly have 100% of all white families flee the public school system. You had a very small group of white families, my parents included. Again, I didn't have anything to do with any of this. I was six years old. Uh, but, but my parents, um, uh, who were white Southerners who grew up in Louisiana, uh, and very much so products of the segregated South, uh, but they had enough conscience and principle and thoughtfulness at the time to realize that, you know, that they wanted to be on the, the right side and what the right side of those issues were. So my family and, and a few dozen others in the beginning uh, in this little place, decided to stay with the public schools. Um, and so a little bit different process unfolded in that town. Uh, the, uh, the Most of the, because this was a majority black town in an overwhelmingly majority black county. You know, so this, this is in the Mississippi Delta, which by most measures is sort of the most predominantly African American area in America, um, certainly among the most uh, predominantly African American. And, um, and so in most places in, Miss in that part of Mississippi, all white families vanished immediately from the public schools and never came back. Um, and, and that's where, and started private schools overnight that what were generally referred to as segregation academies or seg schools, uh, but were private schools set up to preserve segregation. Uh, and so in our little town, that happened. There, there were whites who set up a private school, but there were more white families, or there, there were a meaningful number of white families uh, who stayed in the public schools. And so the film goes, looks at the process of, what, of how that happened in the lead up to, to my class beginning school and then follows the experiences of these kids uh, all the way to high school graduation and tries to capture a sense of the, the, the ways in which that was good. Uh, and I think it was very good for all the white kids. Uh, and I think it was good for most of the African American kids, but I think there's actually some debate to be had about that. Um, and, uh, but it also tries to get at uh, some elements of that story that are often overlooked. Uh, and one of those things is the, the degree to which that as that whole process was happening, involving millions and millions of, of children all across the South, uh, how little understanding of what was going to come next there really was. Uh, and how there was a, an absolutely strong sense of that segregation as it had existed had to end, you know, obviously had to end, you know, this overwhelming moral force uh, that, that, this, that, that the system had to be swept away. But what was going to come next was still pretty unclear. 
uh, for a whole lot of people. And then the biggest thing that, that I think now there's a little more uh, understanding of than there was, say, 10 or 15 years ago, uh, uh, but that the loss of the African-American schools to African-American communities, the, the trauma of that, of these institutions that had been refuges in this incredibly you know, cruel world in so many ways, and that you know, it, and, and I'm not trying to speak for African-Americans in this, but in, in my observations of all this, but the, that along with the church, the African-American schools were these, the, just these, the most important refuges um, in, uh, in so many communities, and for those to abruptly vanish, as they did in almost every place, and the, the whole histories of mascots and championships and you know, the, the, all of the things that, that white people were very aware of their cultural legacy tied into the white school systems that they had always attended, but almost no consciousness whatsoever of that, uh, that well, this is a great loss to African Americans. In fact, and we, took, we explore some of this in the film, you know, that, that, that white folks at that stage are mainly thinking that even well-intentioned white folks uh, have the sense that, that, well, this is what African Americans have been asking for. You know, this is what the Civil Rights Movement has been seeking, you know, is the integration of the schools. Uh, and so, so black families must be thrilled with all this, and this must be just exactly what they want, and there's no thought at all to, uh, so they're giving you the hook, but oh. finish your sentence okay. and letting people ask oh, questions. Yeah, okay. so, so, um, so. And so the film tries to get into some of those complexities of, of, a, of a much more complicated story uh, of, of how things unfolded, why things unfolded a little differently in this place, but also uh, recognizing that in the end, it all fell apart. Acid has fallen apart everywhere. Uh, and I think we, if we're at all honest, that that's the case. There are a few places uh, in America where where, uh, where public school integration has worked. That's almost only it's in places where there are very small African American populations. Uh, but the, in places where there are substantial, where there's really substantial diversity, uh, public school integration, including here in Atlanta, really one can't say it's a success uh, in, in any meaningful sort of way. And so the film also acknowledges that. Uh, and the, and tries to understand why things fell apart in the way that they did, uh, and to and to go beyond the very true answer to the to that question is the racist behavior of racist white people. You know, I mean that's the simplest explanation for why it failed. Uh, but there are other elements as well, uh, and and we try to to explore some of those things in a sensitive way, uh, and in the end to arrive at a uh, and and oh and the last part I'll add to this that that I think makes the film particularly interesting. It's uh, in the, the intimacy of this portrayal, of this small group of children uh, and how we grew up together and who all talk all through the film about their experiences in many different directions. But also, as we were making this film over many years, uh, some of those children, mostly African Americans, began coming back. You know, they, like me, they turned into middle-aged people uh, and uh, some of them have gone back to the town and turned out to be the police chief and the school board president, another member of the school board, and now the superintendent of schools is a member of my class. Um, and so at the end of the film, uh, we see these, the kids who were there in 1970 now are the leaders of the town and faced with a version of the same challenges that our parents faced uh, when we were approaching the first grade and, and how, how that's going.